Hi, I'm Jay Tyler. In this video, I'm going to talk about wire selection. Why is it you use certain types of wires for different applications? There are two basic wires that I use. One of them is a nickel chromium wire, that's what this is, and the other one is a cobalt alloy wire. Now the cobalt alloy, alloy wires are more expensive, so I use the nickel chromium when I can, but a lot of applications you really want to use the cobalt alloy wire. Now here's the difference between the two. You can get the nickel chromium wire in different temper, tempers, and the, the temper refers to its elasticity and its uh, softness. Now elasticity means that how much you can bend the wire without, uh, with, without it coming back. So, you know, I'm able to bend this wire, you know, quite a bit before it stops coming back. This is about a half temper wire. Now if I had a full temper wire, I could bend it a lot more, or a three quarter temper. Now this wire is softer, and it doesn't take much at all to bend this wire, this, and it doesn't come back. So just a little bit of bend at all causes this to deflect and you exceed the elastic limit. So this wire doesn't have as much elasticity as this wire even though this is a softer nickel chromium wire. So uh, this is about as soft as the nickel chromium wire is, is, as you can get. So, but it still is not as soft as the cobalt alloy wire. Now tensile strength is the measure of the strength of wires and the way they do that is they pull the wire apart and measure at what point it breaks. Now we can measure the relative strength of wires and the durability of wires, that's what we're after, the durability, uh, by bending it back and forth and just counting and seeing how many times it takes to break it. So this is the nickel chromium wire, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so at ten bends it breaks. Now let's do this cobalt alloy wire and see how many times it takes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So this is a very, very, very durable wire. It finally breaks. So anytime you can, you want to use this one because of its durability. But if you have to have some spring, you want to use the nickel chromium wire. Even though this is the softest nickel chromium wire that I have, it still has more elasticity than the cobalt alloy, alloy wire. So what does all that mean? Okay, so if you've got a retainer and uh, it's got a ball clasp and a labial bow, you don't have any choice on the ball clasp. It comes as it is and it's about a probably about a three-quarter temper uh, nickel chromium wire. And it's got a little ball attached to it. So you have to go with what you can get from the manufacturer. But on the labial bow you have choices. Now if you have a tooth out of alignment and you need this wire to be springy to move that tooth back, of course you're going to need something with a more springy temper to it. But since elasticity and tensile strength are inversely proportional, that means that the more elasticity you have, the less tensile strength you'll have and the less durability you'll have. So this is the point of stress on a labial bow. So if you have a springier wire, it's going to be less durable here. If you have the teeth all in alignment, then maybe you can go with the uh, cobalt alloy wire and uh, have it go across here and you'll be extremely durable right here because you don't need the spring right there. Now, if you have something like a, like a spring aligner, like I cut these teeth off and I set them up and I made this aligner to uh, to straighten the teeth. So these teeth are out of whack. So this lingual and labial acrylic component, they're going to have to spring out. So there's going to be needing to be springy here and springy down in here. So these wires need to be the spring tempered wire. And uh, this wire that connects, it's not under a great deal of stress. It needs to be strong and durable and help to hold the appliance together. So that could be a, a spring hard wire too. That's about an 040. And these wires are like 028 or 030. Now, if you have something like, uh, let's say, an Adams clasp right here, uh, this I use the uh, cobalt alloy wire because it's under a lot of stress. You've got kids taking it off, putting it on, off and on, off and on, off and on. So there's a lot of stress going on right here and right here, and I want this to be as durable as possible. Doesn't need a lot of spring to it because it just needs to snap in just below the height of contour for retention. But now if you have a clasp that's like this soldered circumferential clasp here, uh, it is just a freestanding wire and its retentive value comes from the end of this tucking into the embrasure. 
Now, if this were a soft wire, it would bend real quickly. So this has to be a spring hard wire, but you could have it soldered to a cobalt alloy wire or a soft nickel chromium wire if there's no movement needing to be done with the anteriors, if it's just for a retentive value only. Now, if you have something like a uh, lower lingual arch, uh, this is an 036. Uh, you can step it up to an 040 if you've got a rough, tough kid to deal with. Uh, it's soldered to the bands. Now, this is going to be in the mouth for a while. I don't know if there's second molars here. They're not indicated on this model, but you can tell by the mixed dentition, this kid's probably, I don't know, like, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11 years old, something like that. So this is going to be in the mouth for a good while while these bicuspids erupt. And uh, this wire needs to be pretty tough. So if you had a soft wire, chances are great the child is going to eat something like bubble gum or something that's going to make this thing bend. So I always use a hard wire on these types of appliances. But now if you've got like a band and loop, like this thing, you've got a short component of a wire and it's soldered on both sides of the band. Not much to it. You can step down to a, a, a softer wire. It's just easier to bend and it's not going to matter that much. If you got something like a transpalatal arch, goes across the upper. Uh, if it's for just holding the arch, you can use like a half or three quarter temper. But if you're going to use it to expand, like a lot of times this will have extensions that go along the lingual of the bicuspids. And this loop will be more like an omega shape here so that the doctor can adjust it to cause expansion. If that's going to be the case, you need to get the more springy tempered wire. Now here's a, an appliance, a retainer, that uses kind of all of this. It's got an 040 hard tempered wire that comes all the way up here and then soldered to that is a soft uh, nickel chromium wire like a half or a, or a quarter, a three quarter and it's just going to maintain, it's just going to hold these anteriors in place so it doesn't need any spring value to it. And then soldered to this is, uh, are, these are called crozet clasps. They tuck into the mesial and uh, distal embrasures on that molar and uh, soldered to this 040 wire. It's a good little retainer, but that I use the cobalt alloy wire. So you got the hard tempered nickel chromium, cobalt alloy wire, and the soft nickel chromium wire all soldered together. But look at this, uh, because of that hard temper wire, you don't have hardly any um, I mean, it, it's, there's, it, it's not soft. It's very hard and it's very durable and it holds that wire into place. So there you have it. There's uh, more discussion of this in my um, video program, Orthodontic Laboratory Basics. Um, contact me if you have any questions at ortholabvideos.com. I'll see you next week.